Protocol inheritance is one of the pillars of protocol-oriented programming. Without protocol inheritance, we'd be forced to squeeze all the required functionality in a single protocol. This leads to the same issue that we had with monolithic superclasses. Protocol inheritance solves this problem by allowing protocols to inherit from each other. Protocols can add new requirements on top of the inherited ones. To show you the benefits of protocol inheritance, I'm going to walk you through a Swift Playground project. I've gone ahead and created this project. The protocol game unit defines the requirements needed for all kinds of game units. Stationary units like buildings and trees, moving units, land and air units, and so on. Now, if I want to create a trooper class, I just make it adopt the game unit protocol. So far, so good. But how about creating a building class? The move by method doesn't make sense. Also, if I need a card type, the hit power property and the fire at method become useless. By now, we see that our protocol has too many responsibilities. Thus, the adopting types need to implement useless properties and methods. This is a common pitfall that we encounter with bloated superclasses. We should avoid this mistake when defining our protocols. Luckily, we can use protocol inheritance to define a more granular design. So let's analyze the requirements defined in the game unit protocol. What's the functionality that is required by all game units? Each unit must have a name and a position, and even a health property. Yet, not all units can fight or move. So I leave the corresponding properties out of the base game unit protocol. For game units that can move by any means, walk, run, fly, swim, and so on, I create a protocol called moving game unit. It only defines the move by method requirement. This protocol needs the requirements defined in the base game unit protocol. I can make this happen through protocol inheritance. We also need a protocol that should be adopted by military units. I call it military game unit and it defines the hit power property and the fire at method. I need to replace the fire at methods parameter and finally, let's make it inherit the base game unit protocol. Now, let's assume that we need a concrete type that represents, say, a building. I can create it by adopting only the base game unit protocol. And if we need a horse, I'm going to define it as a type adopting the moving game unit. If we need a warrior, I'll make it conform to both the moving game unit and the military game unit protocols. We could even create a moving military game unit protocol. The protocol itself doesn't define anything. Moving military game unit simply merges the two protocols for convenience. Unlike classes, protocols can use multiple inheritance. And I use it to declare the soldier type. With protocol inheritance, we manage to create a more flexible, granular design. The protocols we define can extend the requirements inherited from other protocols. Adopting types can choose whether they need the extended functionality or rather implement the requirements defined in the base protocol.